All right, time for another Bearded Wonder video. This time the Bearded Wonder is going to explain sectional divisions within the early American time period. So when we're talking about sectional economics, when we're talking about basically how people use what they have to get what they want, most of the time it's money or resources, something else like that. We need to be very aware of the main sectional difference as far as geography within the colonies in early America. And that is going to be climate. Most notably, the fact that in the south, it is hot. And in the north, it is cold. Um, not so much in the summer. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not like scorching hot here in South Carolina in the summer because it is miserable. Uh, but it can be kind of warm even up in New England. We're more talking about like October until April or May um, because there's a huge difference then, and that makes a huge difference in how long you can grow crops. Uh, and so we basically have two completely different kind of models or, or um, systems of economics that are based largely on how long you can grow stuff. Uh, so in the South, we have our plantation economy. And in the North, uh, basically between September and May, when they couldn't be growing food, uh, they needed something to do. And so a lot of times they, they built a lot of textile factories. Um, they engaged in a lot more heavy um, lumber harvest and, and other kind of industrial practices that supplemented their income. They needed something to sell to England and to Europe that would make money so they could buy food from places like the South, where they could pretty much continue here in South Carolina. If you're growing the right stuff, you can almost grow crops the whole time. So um, taxes is is one of the implications of this. In other words, we're looking at ways that these two different ways of doing life uh, kind of intersected with government and what they want from the government. Uh, the North liked taxes, like tariffs, mainly because they needed the national government to have money to pay for things that they wanted. It also made stuff from Europe more expensive. Uh, which forced people in the South to buy things that were made in the USA. Um, and the South did not like those taxes, mainly because it made all of their stuff more expensive. And so in this case, uh, each section of the country, due to its economic needs, it is looking for something different from the government. Another example is infrastructure, like railroads. Um, again, the North really liked railroads. Uh, lets you build factories away from main waterways. They don't have a whole lot of navigable rivers in the north. In other words, you can't just float stuff to the ocean uh, like you can in the south. And of course, the south didn't want infrastructure, especially when you consider that those taxes are going to be what pays for it. The next one is a national bank. The north wanted a national bank. They needed the, the government to be able to make loans to businesses and other things like that to continue uh, also paying for the railroads and the infrastructure and the canals and the other things that are being built. The South typically did not support the idea of a national bank. Um, and so we're kind of seeing that because of the type of economy that each place has, it's, it's having a strong impact on what they want the national government to do. Uh, the last one is slavery. Um, and in the slavery, the North really didn't care. It didn't impact them a whole lot. There were definitely abolitionists. We'll talk about them when we get to our protest and rebellion unit. Uh, but for the most part, average Northerner just didn't think much about slavery. They, they weren't really there. Um, and so they didn't really care what the government did. Um, as long as it wasn't messing with the railroads and the taxes and the bank and all of that other stuff. Southerners, on the other hand, felt very strongly that the national government should do this. Uh, so, for example, when we looked at the Lincoln-Douglas debates, uh, what you really have is a northerner or a northern supporter, uh, Abraham Lincoln, 
arguing that the national government needed to respect federalism and let every state decide what to do with runaway slaves. And the South said, no, we want the national government to force every state to have laws to, to bring slaves back. Um, and in the same debate, you have Stephen Douglas, uh, who's a Democrat, kind of more favorable to the Southern position, making the argument that because of federalism, um, every state should be allowed to pick whether they have slaves or not, regardless of where they are on a map. Um, and so if you look really closely, the taxes um, are largely connected to the Southern way of life, which includes slavery. The infrastructure, uh, the South doesn't need railroads to get their cotton to the markets and to get them to the British ships to take to Europe. And they don't need a national bank to make big loans because the plantations are already doing fine. And so for the most part, these sectional economics are strongly connected to the main issue, which is slavery. Um, and these, all of these issues are connected to climate. In other words, what kind of economic activity is even possible uh, because of how long the sun shines and how warm it is in November. So that's it for our lesson today. Tomorrow uh, we're going to get even more into slavery uh, and talk a little bit more about that because it is an important thing that we need to deal with. All right, I hope you have a good day.